All right, hello everybody. Welcome to another video. Welcome to the match preview of Real Madrid versus Atletico Madrid. Uh, so pretty much I'm going to go over both press conferences, uh, which really were boring. Um, I think a biochemistry class could really beat that. It was, um, <clears throat> I mean, it was it was useless. It was petty. Uh, didn't really get much from it, but um, I did glean some um, answers from the press conference. So uh, let's get started on the Solari one. <clears throat> so maybe some of the mo more interesting questions, which they weren't really that uh, pertinent to tomorrow's game, but I'll still go over them, was um, does Morata need to celebrate tomorrow or not? Um, you know, Solari responded, the respect for the rival has nothing to do with personal satisfactions. <clears throat> really, his his answers are just so boring. I mean, I I can't wait for them to be over those press conferences. He, he never... He almost never, ever, ever answers the question directly, and I think that's what frustrates a lot of, of us fans. Or, and he did, he doesn't have a lot of charisma, so obviously uh, that doesn't help his um. That doesn't help the whole press conference either. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Anyways, that's that's conversation for another time. Um, let's get to the other questions. Um, so someone asked, "How is Isco? You know, you can't go with." You can't go a press conference without asking about Isco. But in this case, I think it was because Isco had a little niggle. So uh, someone asked, how is Isco and will he be in the squad tomorrow? Um, <clears throat> so pretty much Solari just answered that he's got a little niggle at the shoulder, but we'll evaluate him tomorrow. Um, so yeah, obviously he has something, but really <clears throat> would that have changed anything? Isco wouldn't have played anyways, for sure. You know, we all know that. We all know that. We all know there. It's it's more than just an injury that you know. Uh, that won't make the difference for Isco not playing. Pretty much it. Um, and then there was also about a question about Isco's tweet. Now, if you guys don't know, uh, there was a tweet put out by Isco yesterday uh, responding to a journalist. I think it was Della Red, um, and he used to be a Real Madrid player, and he pretty much said that. Uh, can't remember if you uh anyways yeah go go look that up i'm sorry i'm sorry i don't have it with me uh i think it was something along if you don't take your chances at real madrid then someone else will take that spot but you know isco just pretty much responded that if you don't have the same opportunity as your teammates then things can get a little different things are not the same um you know so that's that's really it it's um it's not Isco's fault, to be honest. It's it's really not. And I think if everyone really looks more at the situation, it's just that Solari cannot <clears throat> fit Isco into his formation because he doesn't play with the number 10. And obviously, if you look throughout uh, throughout football right now, there's a lot of problems with cams right now at the moment. Uh, you know, Coutinho's a problem. Coutinho's someone who has a, a bit of a problem because um, he can't play uh, as a number 10 in Ernesto Valverde's formation because... Ernesto Valverde, I think, uses 4-3-3 as well, and with no cam. Uh, so Coutinho's having difficulties. You know, Juan Mata at Manchester United, he's never really, uh, you know, performed to the level that, that we thought, but he was always playing on the right. He was never playing at the center. Um, you know, and I can think of numerous other people or other number 10s who are not, um, who are not being played, I guess, to their full potential because... Uh, they don't fit a certain system, or uh, coaches can't put them in that system. You know, you could see uh, Mkhitaryan too at Arsenal hasn't really worked out. Um, at Manchester United, didn't really work out either. So, a lot of number tens having problems, and East Coast just uh, another another victim to this um, to this conundrum. So, um, so that's East Coast tweet really. Um, someone else asked, uh, yeah, someone else about. Isco's tweet, uh, do you think you can do something different or do you think you can do something to help the change the situation? Um, and he uh, he didn't really say much about that. He, I think he just said, I, I answered all the questions I needed to. Or I think he, he might have said, actually, what he might have said is um, uh, the, the job of a professional footballer is to, to, uh, to train and to maximize their uh, training sessions and... Um, you know, once called, they have to be fit. And that's pretty much what he said, you know. But again, we're not getting the, the right answers. And that's the problem with <clears throat> with the Solari's press conferences is that 
a lot of people feel frustrated or a lot of journalists probably feel frustrated because they're not getting the answers that they want and it's not that um, they're trying to put words in his mouth but rather they're not getting an answer that um, that how can I say it they're not getting their questions answered really what they're getting is some kind of ambiguous generic statement you know uh, uh, put out at them really so that's why people keep asking the same questions over and over obviously it wasn't a very good press conference um, on either side um, and I, yeah, I was surprised Solari has played with Cholo Simeone in the Argentine team, and he was coached under him at San Lorenzo, and now they're going to be, uh, you know, not playing against each other, but managing uh, the teams against each other. So I thought that was kind of surprising. Um, anyways, let's go on to the Simeone, um, Simeone uh, press conference. Uh, so nothing, nothing really... Nothing really pertinent there. Um, just about questions about Courtois. How is Courtois going to be, um, you know, received by the Atletico fans? Um, <laughs> I think if we all know, he probably there might be a kind of a hostile environment there. But uh, I, I I really don't know more of the history behind that. Uh, in my time that I've watched uh, football, I've never really uh, seen, uh, you know, players uh, from Atletico being. Um, uh, being uh, being bought by Real Madrid. It was just before I started watching in 2010. I don't think we've had any players from Atletico uh, to Real Madrid before Courtois, and I don't think I've seen any Athletic uh, any Real Madrid players go to uh, Atletico. So uh, we'll have to see how that goes. Um, I think I think Courtois is in for not a very good reception, to be honest. Well, we'll have to see. Um, <clears throat> and then another question, who was the most important player for Real Madrid? He pretty much said Modric, like I always say. So that's that's all, really. That's all the press conferences. Um, as for maybe information about the match, relevant information, uh, Atletico are currently second in the league. They are six points behind Barcelona at 44 points. Barcelona at 50 points. Uh, and uh, they have the best defense in the league. Um, so goals conceded at 14 in 22 matches, which is really, really good. Um, you know, only .63 goals conceded per match. So uh, they obviously have a very, very solid defense. Um, and their, their wins and loss ratio, uh, they have 12 wins, they have 8 draws, and they have 2 losses. <clears throat> obviously, a draw when you don't score a lot. <laughs> You'll tend to draw a lot of your games. <laughs> That's only normal, I think. Um, so they are they are a good team. They are definitely a good team. I think uh, Saul and Koke might be out uh, for this game. Maybe Saul's going to be coming back. Um, they have a lot of good players. You know, they have players in each position that are very good. Um, <clears throat> yeah, we know we know that they're a very good team. They're second in the league for a reason. Uh, you know, Oblak, um, Griezmann. Morata, you could say there could be a resurgence from him, especially against Real Madrid. Probably he won't. He'll want to prove a point against his former club, and I think so. Um, you know, I think he will play pretty good. Um, yeah, and then let's go to Real Madrid. Real Madrid have thirteen wins, three draws, six losses. Uh, so yeah, obviously they're in third place. Um, goals for thirty seven, goals against twenty six, goals difference eleven. Uh, for a total of 42 points. So we're two points behind Atletico Madrid. So if we can get this win, it's very, very crucial because we can go in that second place and hopefully um, <clears throat> compete for the title because that's really what we want. So, um, so yeah, if we, we really need to get this win. It's a very, very crucial if we want to be in that La Liga race. Um, <clears throat> maybe some people don't think we're in the race yet. I still think we're in it. Um you know, up to February, maybe February or March, I'll make more of an assessment. But I still think that we're in it. I think Barcelona could still lose a few points here and there. Um, and, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. That's pretty much all I want to say. Um, the line, As far as the lineup goes, I think it'll be, uh, you know, yeah, Navas. I, I thought Navas would start playing more. But last time I realized it was the cup, you know. So I think it's just going to be Courtois that's going to be playing goal, which obviously I don't agree with. Um, <clears throat> and then you have Carvajal. Carvajal, yeah, you'll have Carvajal, Veron, and Sergio Ramos in the center back. You'll have Marcelo or De Guilon. I'm not sure about the Marcelo or De Guilon. Um, I want to say Marcelo for the experience. I think Marcelo might just play there. 
I think it's going to be Llorente, Modric, and Cruz in the CM position, CDM. And then forwards, I think uh, it'll be Vinicius, Benzema, and Lucas. I don't think uh, Solari will want to change that. I think it's been going really good. Um, you know, and Bale will just have to work his way into back into the team, you know. Um, yeah, I think I think maybe Solari expects more from Gareth Bale. I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see. Uh, but, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much all I have for you guys today. Uh, so, match prediction. Uh, I think it's going to be... <clears throat> I'm going to say 1-1 draw. Um, and that sucks because, obviously, we won't get into second place. Um, but hopefully I'm proven wrong, but I think it's going to be a 1-1 draw again. So, that's all I have for you guys for today. So, thank you guys for watching, and stay tuned for tomorrow's match reaction. Thank you.